Well, see, the, at the heart of the issue in, in Manipur is the whole fear that uh, small communities and microscopic minorities like the, popul the indigenous populations of Manipur would one day be overswamped by the outsider population. And this fear comes from uh, uh, a long history. Uh, if you look at Manipur, for example, it was uh, until the British came an independent kingdom uh, of its own and there were uh, regulations on people who are coming from outside to settle there. As early as 1901, there are regulations which are in place. And in 1947, when the British left, uh, we had our own constitution and uh, in the assembly in 1948, uh, this uh, same uh, control of population influx into that area was passed. This got the approval of even the governor of Assam and this was in operation. In 1950, 18th of November, uh, this uh, this this uh, you know outsiders control mechanism was summarily lifted by an executive order by the then commissioner chief commissioner and after that there is a sudden spike in terms of the decadal growth uh, you know from if you look at 1941 to 1951 the average uh, decadal growth was about 12 to uh, 13 percent which is the same as uh, in Indian uh, general growth in Manipur but if you look at 1951 to 1961 it jumped up to about 35 percent and in 1951 to 1960 it went to about 37 percent which is completely unnatural and a huge influx have taken place so there was a, a, a movement from the students when there was also agitations from in Assam and in the 70s there was a slight reduction because there was a students movement and in 1980 uh, there was an accord signed between the old Manipur Students Union and the government of Manipur uh, wherein it was agreed that uh, there has to be certain measures taken in order to check this uh, uh, unnatural growth in the population and um, uh, complete change in the demographic structure. Unfortunately these things are easier said than done. This accords never get implemented. Again in 1994 uh, 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 when it was a president's rule when General V.K. Nair was the governor of Manipur. There was again a, a similar accord signed between the uh, students. So, but this problem of outsider is becoming much more serious now. I mean, in, in 1948, for example, uh, when this question was asked in the then uh, independent Manipur's assembly, the figure of outsider was just 3,000, less than 3,000, something 2,800 something. But now the estimated figure is about 10 lakhs. So in 70 years span, roughly, if there is this kind of multiplication, then in the next 70 years, the projected outsider's population is running around 40 crores. And there will be definitely no place for indigenous communities to survive. And this is becoming all the more challenging because uh, now we have this up as a part of the Act East policy, the Trans-Asian Highway is running through Manipur, the Trans-Asian Railway is running through Manipur. And now uh, the whole trade between South, Southeast Asia and Far East Asia is going to go through <coughs> this. So people are demanding that there should be some way of regulating this population flow. How much can people buy land? How much can they establish, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, shops and establishment? There has to be some form of regulation of this. And and this is the core of the agitation today on ILP. ILP is a very old norm that the British have started uh, among uh, Arunachal, Mizoram, Nagaland, where there is a there these are loosely administered, and people who enter this inner line has to get a permission. So it's it's a very colloquial way of saying we also want we also need an, an inner line permit as it is done in Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, and Mizoram. Uh, but at the crux of the problem is this fear that you will be overswamped by outside population and this has already ha become quite an issue in Assam as we all know the, the last election was fla uh, fought on this plank in Tripura the indigenous population has been shrunk to less than 28 uh, percent so now they are completely lost they do not have a say in politics they don't have a say in civil society so the fear is that in Manipur also there is an apprehension that before things go to that 
situation. It is there is a need for regulation so that one is not saying that outsiders should not come, but whoever comes should be regulated and there should be proper ways and uh, procedures that needs to be established. To my understanding, to the best of my understanding, this is the crux of the whole problem uh, that is coming up. And um, unfortunately, this has been interpreted in a very different fashion by the friends from uh, the civil society in the hills. Uh, the Hill Civil Society is looking at it more as a threat to their own land rights. Uh, I think this is more hypothetical than, than real, but if there is any um, rough edges in this present bill which is not uh, addressing the issues of the concerns of the Hill people, I think that has to be amended. Uh, there is no question about it. And of course, there is also a little problem in terms of when they said 1951 as a cutoff year in identifying the Manipuris. From the, from the historical point of view, it was important important because it was it was a time when this this what we used to have was uh, kind of lifted uh, the, the, the 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 ceiling was lifted at that point of time uh, however the, if there are people there is also a process of naturalization where people can be naturalized and i think those areas needs to be looked at uh, unfortunately this bill was passed in a very uh, very hush hush manner without a proper debate and discussion mm -hmm. so the very core issue seems to be lost in uh, a largely identity ethnic conflict and ethnic rivalries which has always existed in this money in in the context of manipur hill valley naga kuki maitai that dynamics unfortunately we seem to be losing the issue and we are this seems to be fought more as a kind of a we have to win or we have to lose so it's more like a, of an identity uh, issue of losing face rather than uh, and, and somehow the real issue with which the the initial uh, uh, you know, people's movement for an ILP kind of a syst system seem to be lost somewhere on the way. Joy, first of all, I am a believer that migrants, so-called outsiders, can actually help build the economy <laughs> if it's is a proper way of ensuring that there is a regulation, control, and proper assimilation. Um, so the people of Manipur are not saying no to people coming in, but in the entire world, we have just that little portion of land. Uh, the hills has more than sixty, uh, more than ninety percent, and the valley is about ten percent. Out of which Loktak Lake covers about I think three to four percent, and so we have a very minuscule area left for uh, indigenous people of Manipur to really survive there. Uh, because of the British uh, system, uh, one cannot buy land in the hills, but the hill people can come and buy lands in the valley. And anyone from any part of India can come and buy land in this part of 10% of Manipur. Um, so actually, the uh, we are not being xenophobic or parochial. We just want to survive as a beautiful civilization which has existed for like thousands of years. The Manipuri civilization didn't start yesterday. It started, we have a recorded history as enshrined in many of our puyas, our chronicles and everything. So historically, it's been a very ancient Asia, Asiatic kingdom, you know, which even the Chinese took permission to take part in the Silk Route. We fought against the Burmese, we fought against the Chinese. Uh, the Chinese taught the Manipuri the art of silk rearing. <laughs> so we have a very old ancient um, culture there and civilization. So we're just asking the government of India to help protect it. It's as simple and as clear as that. Now, for, for us, yes, definitely. The division of Manipur didn't start with ILP. It's as old as the hills itself. It started with religion. <laughs> 18th century Bengalis came, brainwashed our king and converted. That's why 61% of Manipuris are Hindus. My name, Bina Lakshmi, you see. <laughs> In the hills, the British came and they with them brought Christian missionaries. With Hinduism came Mangba Sengba means, okay, if you eat beef, you are dirty. If you eat pork, you are dirty. So uh, my grandfather never touched any of these. We had to cook 
chicken outside the house. <laughs> the utensils, as even my mother doesn't even touch egg till now, you know. Though we are actually uh, animists, not even Hindus, but in terms of a, bit, a little bit of impact it create. So uh, what is clean food? What is dirty food? Uh, what is, uh, you know, all these structures came with Hinduism. So a lot of people who are in valley area looked down upon the various ethnic communities who are not Hindus. And actually, it is a grievance of years, of more than 200 years, years of how the converted Hindu Manipuris have treated, actually. This is one of the main crux that we must understand. The Hill Valley Divide is a creation of a few year, a few uh, months back. It, have you ever seen the hill fighting the valley? Nature? The term tribals versus non tribal again, another semantics created. I'm trained as a historian, so it's very fascinating and sad to see how people are contorting to separate. Okay. So, yes, there are grievances, and I have publicly stated that because of some of these elements of ways of looking at culture and sociological, we must apologize to the wrongs done. For example, a lot of tribal communities said many Manipuri Valley community like that treating them like untouchables. It's there. If I was born in Ukrul, I would revolt against the Maitis. There are certain things which has happened historically because of religion, which is not of our own making, imposed from outside. Hinduism came from outside. We worship the rays and sun of the moon every day. We, so my family does, even I do till now, Christianity, both are external imports, imports to the place. They divided us, you see. So that is the first divide. The inner line permit issue, it's a very old colonial law. The Joint Action Committee on Inner Line Permit doesn't say we have to impose IL. It says ILP or an equivalent thing as enshrined that the constitution allows that if a group of community wants certain changes, it can be done. So it says not just it's not about ILP alone, which is inner line permit. It is it's so archaic, 200 years old. We, who wants an archaic colonial law? But what we are talking is about, please keep the pristineness of a certain, it's beautiful, it's like a, the way we are revolted against genetic engineering, you see. It's the same thing. There is an attempt of population engineering in the entire Northeast. As Tamu Babalu said, in Tripura, they've been reduced to a minority, they've been working in the last four years. In Sikkim, they have done it. The Lepchas and the Bhutias are now reduced to 17%. They are they have a lot of grief in their heart. I've been going to Sikkim last two to three years, and I know the situation is worse there, but no one talks about it. So we are talking about the attempted population engineering happening in the region. We do not, it is, this is a global world. As I said, I travel globally, Tamu Babli travels globally. We are not saying that it should be, but you cannot engineer um, a, a, a population to ensure that you are made extinct. We are constantly reminded of the 300 reservations in North America. The Native Americans have been reduced to a minority, how they were, population engineering was done, how diseases were introduced, how they are now in 300 reservations and where alcoholism and drug abuse is on the rise in this, where the population, the per capita income of the Native American is just five, 7,000 US dollar a year and they're one of the poorest communities in the United States of America. We have seen how they, we don't want as Northeast people, not just Manipuris. The struggle of the Manipuri people for ILP on Equivalent Act is not just for Manipuri. It will set an example because 90% of Northeast of India is indigenous population, 90%. The government of India do not accept there is indigenous community. But if you come, even by the definition of the constitution term, 90% of uh, Northeast of India is indigenous, as, as per the UN Convention on Indigenous Peoples' Rights, you cannot, you cannot just do what you want in these areas. And we, the people of Manipur, we consider ourselves indigenous too, because that's our land. We are very deeply connected to our land. We are very deeply connected to our culture, our language. And we are fearing that there is an attempt because Manipur is one of the most beautiful civilizations. The introduction of polo 
Manipur is recognized as one of the birthplaces of Kung. The classical Manipuri dance, how can you forget? So we are, we've been, look at our clothing, the way we have woven women. Have, these are extreme examples of a, a very, very um, evolved culture. And that's why if, if the people of Manipur is asking for the protection and have passed the Manipuri people's bill to ensure their safety and security of our people, that is a right that the government of India should really heed to. As far as the reservations of the, um, our, our, like as I said, Manipur is home to 39 beautiful indigenous communities. It also has a Gurkha community, as you saw. It also has a Marwari community because of trading. It has got Punjab. A huge amount of Tamil population, 40,000 Tamils there. So Bengali community, you know, we have a Bengali high school. So Manipur had a very evolved system of uh, existing unity. This creation of Hill and Valley is just 10 months old. It only happened after the passing of the bill on 31st of August. We were shocked at the sudden way of them. Election is happening in Manipur in the next couple of like 10 months or even less than that. Okay, You cannot engineer a Hindu-Muslim conflict in Manipur. So you will engineer an ethnic conflict. All political parties are involved. The Congress uh, as a group have been, uh, they have been, uh, for vote banks have been putting a lot of people themselves. Tamu Babu, you'll agree with me. Jiribam is filled with those. Um, and right now, um, the current party will play its politics. So everyone is involved, and particularly the two biggest parties. For us, we are not saying don't play your politics, but the politics, what we are keeping vigilant is a politics which makes cookies, nagas and maites kill each other. That is what we are against. You have, you have a right, it's a democracy, play your party politics, but the politics which, is, which will create genocide, that is what we will stand and fight to the nail against. This is what we are fearing and that's what we will be resisting. Uh, over and above the the political parties in in the the political formations in the northeast ethnicity has always been a very very important uh, thing um, um, uh, kind of a marker of identity around which politics has been built up that's why this this whole issue of naga identity or a clash between nagas and the cookies have always been a, a very problematic uh, uh, situation i mean it's it's very uh, sensitive and it's it's it it, it can be it can this identity Identity politics can be very, um, you know, um, uh, uh, emotive and can draw many people to a lot of action. See, from our point of view, um, every human being has rights, then, uh, irrespective of whether they are migrants or immigrants or people who are stateless or refugees. Uh, the concern that the present issue is throwing up is that, see, it's a bit like uh, these places have been closed societies for a very long time. Now, inevitably, this has to open up to the rest of the world. The last time that, that, that the Northeast was open to uh, the, the, the processes of the world was perhaps the Second World War. Second World War came, it was fought with such vigor in that, in that part of the world, but it came in 1942, but it left in 1944. And thereafter, that part again was closed from the rest of the world. Now, when this Trans-Asian Highway and Trans-Asian Railway comes in, and when the economy, the, the whole the part of this trade that's going on in Malacca Strait uh, becomes part of the land route in these areas. Eventually, this is this is what is going to come. Uh, the amount of change that this is going to bring about to these places is going to be huge beyond the imagination of anybody. And therefore, it is time from now onwards to have an, have uh, have a preparation towards how people are going to be protected, how land would be protected, how uh, um, if corporates from Singapore comes tomorrow and want to establish, they can buy off the entire valley of Manipur without any difficulty. Would that be allowed just because they have money power? I mean, these things have to be taken into consideration when it is very fine 
trying to talk about Aki's policy, Aki's policy, and um, have all these big dreams about connecting all the the giants of Asia. One has to also think of what what will, what impact it will have on the people who have been there for thousands of, of years. Uh, one is not saying that this should be stopped, but it has to be done in a way that that it doesn't necessarily become a tsunami that takes everything away. It has to be done in a way that respects uh, the histories and traditions of these people in a way that that can be a win-win situation rather than uh, a win that blows away everything. That is the main concern. If we come to the present analysis in terms of the, the economy as you are saying, see again one is not saying that uh, People who are coming from other parts of East India, particularly, who, which is generating a lot of labor, one is not saying that this should be stopped. What JCILPS is demanding is that the, the labor department should function properly. At this moment, this is completely unaccountable. Who comes in? What happens? Uh, so sometimes crime activities increases. What, what the, the demand that has come up from the popular movement is that have, let there be a proper functioning uh, labor department. Labor department is there only for name. Check. So please put all these things in records. Let us also know how many people are coming in, what is their contribution to the economy. This needs a proper governance. At this moment, um, it, it is, I mean, everybody is free for all and they're doing anything and this. And this is putting a pressure, a lot of pressure on the demography of this small valley area. Again, uh, where the hills are anyway protected because they are scheduled areas. But the, the, the valley, which is not a tribal land, is where where all this where all the agricultural lands are also there the, all the rice production on which people depend is there so there's a lot of pressure on agricultural land uh, so th these needs to be regulated and protected this is this is this is the basic contention that is uh, that is coming Nineteen fifty one is important precisely because it was in November nineteen fifty that the 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 regulation which existed for many many years and which was the most legitimate uh, law has been lifted and therefore symbolically it is important to put nineteen fifty one. However, uh, I, I distinctly remember. Uh, in the memorandum that was sent to the chief minister by the JCILP, it was very clear that, that there is also a process of naturalization. We are not saying that everybody uh, uh, who comes from 1951 would necessarily be uh, non-Manipuri. And if there is anything like that, I think that has to be uh, uh, checked. I mean, it's part of international human rights law, universal declaration. Universal declaration of human rights says if people are fearing prosecution and entering into a, a country, uh, it is it is it is the responsibility of that country to give asylum status mm -hmm. and there is also a process of naturalization of people who came outside and this existed even in the pre uh, uh, you know uh, merger constitution and the acts that people who come from outside there is a way of naturalizing them in, as a part of the manipuri uh, culture and civilization and citizenship the manipuri nationality was granted to people who came from outside so this was the law that we inherited from our uh, from our pre-merger uh, constitution and this applies I can understand it will be a I can completely understand that it could be an embarrassment and to having to go through that scrutiny would be a, a totally um, you know uh, unwelcoming practice for people who have stayed for generations in Manipur mm -hmm. and therefore one has to find ways of curving those inconveniences and and how do we ensure that all this embarrassment are, are set aside but for that we need to sit together and discuss what are the procedures that needs to be followed how that needs to be done um, um, this whole thing that because this bill was passed and this bill have to be called off only then we will sit and have a discussion I think is a little bit it's either our way or the highway kind of a situation
Again, a very uh, honest response to that from my side would be, uh, see, Arunachal have more land than Assam, but we have only two MPs from Arunachal Pradesh, whereas we have 15 MPs from Assam. Representation is not on land. Representation is on population. And obviously, even though 90% of the land is hills, population-wise, it is very sparsely populated. Uh, and, and the problem is there's tremendous pressure on the valley. And so delimitation, that is what he's saying, has to be on the basis of population and the problem with census in Manipur today is that people cannot go and do a proper census today what is coming out as a census report are, are being very seriously questioned because people who are enumerating it cannot enter into many of these villages they are all under the control of certain underground outfits and therefore whatever they feed as the population uh, there are many places in Manipur where there are unnaturally uh, uh, southern growth of population which cannot be which is not seen on the ground like so there is percent growth yeah in in senapati district, district which cannot be which you cannot have a delineate and have a new uh, assembly constituency on the basis of this 700 percent growth these are these are little more than what uh, <coughs> common sense would digest and therefore uh, there are huge manipulations by many vested interests and therefore this requires a f uh, i mean i am completely open to have a proper representation but all said and done valley valley has a much larger population than a hill so obviously it has to be we cannot do it i mean uh, the, 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 the if so long as we have a, pop, a, a, a government i mean um, a, 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 uh, representation according to the people and population that is what it has I am if there are communities who feel that they are underrepresented in the politics of Manipur we are we have been advocating for an upper house in Manipur where every ethnic community is equally represented where those kind of debates can can take place uh, but again you cannot have one community dictating terms uh, on the rest of the community this is a plural society and therefore there has to be a plural economy uh, I mean a plural politics where both the majority as well as minorities point of view are taken into consideration and there has to be a certain rationale that we all follow certain principles that we have to follow To be very honest, I knew for sure it is the Naga People's Front was one of the protagonists of the ILP in the beginning. Uh, now, the problem is because because at the end of the day, uh, the Naga movement is also about the son of the soil, their their fear of overswamping by outsider, and it's also an identity-based uh, movement, and they see a lot of merit initially. But now. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm I'm subject to corruption, but but now the 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 the. the politics seems to have boiled down to the fact that because the valley people were standing against a naga solution and therefore therefore when the valley people wants their protection this cannot be done without uh, the the naga politics coming into this has become a kind of an ethnic rivalry rather than um, see the problem is the issues has been lost in in an in an in a in an ethnically polarized situation where ethnic supremacy of one against the other is becoming the uh, uh, kind of determining political factor and this is the most unfortunate part uh, this is why genuine issues of concern of the region of the community is getting tied up into the ethnic rivalry between uh, Nagas, Maitais, Kukis and that is the tragedy uh, and how do we untangle this and, and, and put the issues again back to the agenda is the critical question emotional historic hurt they have been feeling okay one is a lot of this um if you look at the whatsapp pages of many of the uh, anti-bill movements you know what they are i have been studying them very 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 carefully uh they have been bringing out the historical uh mis the historical uh, mis misdoings or something as i said in terms of how the valley people have treated the hill people so there are things as i said it's not just about ilp alone but there are these historical things which needed to be mended the other thing is about uh, representation which just now the discussion has happened <clears throat> 
in the in Manipur we have got as I said that day also we have got ethnic groups as small as 300 500 in number I'm all community 300 I've met many of them you know so not everything in Manipur can be just club into cookie Naga Maitais Manipuri Muslim there are small so many of them and there is an attempt to assimilate for example the Anal community we asked to become Dagas you see so there is this for us what's happening and as beautifully said that day it's a question of identity politics with what identity will be comfortable the Nagas themselves don't know the Maitais are highly confused <laughs> and uh, now the cookies are away from the Zomi which is another completely different identity so it's about a very fractured identity no one is at peace even themselves there's nothing so simple as hill versus valley tribals versus it's, it's identity politics which is constantly that's why when Ciro said let everyone join Nagalim we're saying like listen it's it's an it's a like we we don't agree with it because um, if you feel that you are the leaders create a new nomenclature which will take everyone on board and let's negotiate 2001 was a turning point in the history of Manipur I, I remember I was still a student of JNU and it was mapping conflict in Manipur when 2001 erupted. Suddenly, um, and I used to teach a lot of uh, Tankul girls in my university, you know. Suddenly they stopped talking to me. Suddenly I was a Maite. <laughs> For me, I felt I was a human being from born in Manipur. I've never like been comfortable in a very small identity. Sprout as a Manipuri, we were all from Manipur and things like that. But 2001, I realized there was a fracture, a very deep fracture. And last year was a culmination of what happened in 2001. Naga as a nation, the word Naga Lim, Lim is an our word, it's not a Tangul word. Lim means land. They were doing it to assimilate the biggest Naga tribe, the Aos, which are completely against the IM ideology. It's about Benedict Anderson's imagined community. You're trying to create nations. Okay and that's why and and absolutely nagas have every right to their sovereign of, of their self-determination no one is saying not just as everyone has okay but the thing is uh, it's been the manipuri identity has been for centuries the naga identity has been about 60 to 70 years old the tussle is that you know so if you want to suddenly break it is going to take some time, you know. So that's the tussle, actually. So this identity politics, as I said, and right now, politics has really played a major part. The Naga People's Front had already, before the elections, tied up with the BJP. BJP wants to open accounts in the assembly in Manipur in a very big way. Yeah. So they are also playing their politics very, very viciously. So, and uh, they have used different elements, you know. That's why we're saying, we are not against politics, but a politics which will create a genocide, a, an ethnic cleansing. That is what we are against. And that is what we are, uh, as civil society, as women activists, we are very, it's, we are very deeply concerned. And that's why this meeting on 11th, that yes, you play your politics, violent politics, insurgent politics, or politics of national politics. No one is, we, who are we to say that? But right now, the politics which is being played is compounded by the social media, where there's a tremendous poisoning of the minds of the young people, where such disgusting words of hatred has been written once against the other. A statement saying, when I hear the word Maite, I feel like spitting. I think, you see, the way the present conflict is played out is the way Manipur looks at India too. We have the Armed Forces Special Powers Act in the Naga Hills since 1950 and in the Valley since 1980. We, have, we, we live in a deeply weaponized democracy in Manipur. It's the same way I would answer that question like that. Um, one country, one law. Why one country, two law? thinking all Manipuris, including tribals in the Hill Valley, are all suspects in the eyes of the government of India. That's why you keep the Apsfa. That's how Ichesh Sharmila, whom no one talks about now, in this whole vicious politics, identity politics, where the real issues have really been delegated to the dust. So these are the concerns that we have. 
Yes, we have been telling the government of India, apologize to the people of Manipur for killing 20,000 of us, for having many of our bodies, being, of our people being disappeared, of our women being raped. And if Manipuri as, as, a, as a state have made historical mistakes, we should also have the courage to, 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 to say sorry. That's what I've been telling our people. If we have made some historical mistakes because of religion, let's apologize. First one, we have to accept mistakes being made. Because in short, the Manipuri Valley people still control the assembly. We still are the masters, you see. So we should have the courage and the bigger heart to say we are sorry for the wrongs done. That will take out, that will be one of the greatest confidence building measure. Second is to sit down together. The bill, as you said, where are the points of contentions? As I shared with you, if 1951 is unacceptable, then what is it that we can come together that everyone is comfortable with? Because even with ILP, anyone born after 1987 in India are citizens of India, you know. So, so it's, it's something, it is not so much 1951 from, 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 from my humble understanding. The thing is, if there is a fear psychosis, then how do we address it? Okay. And third is, as I said, um, the structuring of how the hill people uh, or, or the different ethnic communities have been complaining that all the universities are in Imphal, all the medical colleges are in Imphal. We will have to make huge changes that it is distributed across the nine districts of Manipur. We work in five districts, so we know the pathetic condition in which there is no basic health care, no electricity. So I would be angry if I was living in Tamenglong or Ukrul district. There are genuine structural changes. And as I said, it boils down to very bad governance of a corrupted. We are, our, our political leadership have been completely morally bankrupt. We have a whole assembly filled with contractors. They cannot be called leaders, you see. And it's a democracy purchased with vote. It's a democracy where you can change the election results by paying three crore rupees. So let me blame it on the decadent democracy of our nation, which has also reached there. So you think that everything is clean in political. So many people with insurgent links are in political parties. <laughs> you see, the ones, real ones, uh, the, they are ones with principle who say will abide by Geneva Conventions. I'm not talking about those. But Manipur is home to 60 insurgent groups. It's not one or two. And many are, uh, are like what the Ranbir Sena of Bihar. Many politicians have set up armed groups and they play the identity politics. So that just as the conflict was going on the other day, I got a call from the parents of a six-year-old girl who was raped and murdered in Bishnupur district in February. The mother is from None in Tamingno. What did they ask? They ask that they have no food to eat. Can you give us some rice and vegetables? She was calling up from None, pleading for some rice. And, and this is the level we are living right now. And this, and this is the way in which no basic uh, way of dealing with issues. Uh, basic issues, if are met, both hills and valleys suffer from the same decadent politics. But the thought that was coming when I was listening to uh, Bina was that, see, this bill, this three bill, which has become such a controversy about which so much has been spoken, was introduced in the assembly on a Friday, 28th. And then there was Saturday and there was Sunday. And on Monday, it was passed. Not a single MLA raised a single issue about all these issues which has, on which 12 people have been killed, Manipur has been put on, on, a, on a, literally on, on a hang for so many days. I mean, what is wrong with this assembly? What is wrong with this democratic institution? If there was any problem, at least there are 20 tribal MLAs for heaven's sake. Yeah. One of them should speak up and say this is wrong. Yeah. Nobody said a word. Nobody. 
bill was passed it was business as usual it is only when people students started agitating people started agitating that these issues have come up what is the importance of this democratic institution is what i am really very very worried about if this this was about passing some bills for some contract work there would have been a debate I mean, what is wrong with this representative of the people who are supposed to be representing the voice of their particular constituency? There was the, 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 now the, 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 the civil society is saying that this is this is not a money bill. This should have gone through the uh, uh, Hill area committee. But Hill area committee was right in the middle of the assembly, and everybody was awake, I suppose, when this bill was passed. Nobody raised an issue. And if this kind of complete irresponsibility continues, I think these issues will be fought in the in the street like this. Now there are two nationalism narrative that is emerging quite consistently in Manipur today. One is the Nagalim, and one is the Manipur uh, 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 narrative. I mean, the, there were problems in the in the Manipur uh, narrative. There are problems in this uh, Nagalim narrative as well as was pointed out by Bina also. Uh, I mean, historically, the Maitai state came about by amalgamation of seven states, which started perhaps in the beginning of the, uh, the, the, the first century AD. And then with the coming of Hinduism, uh, there is again a stratification in the, in the society. There, there were Brahmins who came from outside the, the state, with, by, which married the uh, local population. The, the Muslims have also come and had similar experiences. And people who have accepted Hinduism were people who are considered the loyalists of the state, people who didn't Except Hinduism becomes basically the Sudras or the, the ST population, SE population among the Maitais. Mm. And those people in the hills where the, the influence of the, the, the state was not very uh, uh, powerful have remained animistic for, uh, for, for many years. And when the British came and tried to uh, kind of spread Christianity, they found these hill people as the most um, vulnerable. And so the systematic uh, uh, Christianization of this. Of the hill so when it was only one hand it was it was a domination by the uh, by the hindu uh, sanskritic notion uh, there were suppression of the hills but that, that didn't become a problem now when you become organized as a christian community the christian again defined those non believers as pagans and now backed it up with the with the naga insurgency uh, they say the nsn's gun and the tankul pastor becomes a, a very uh, potent uh, this thing of unification of Nagas and the uh, tribal population and therefore when both sides get power and, and influence and connections elsewhere then the, 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 the there is a kind of a symmetry that was created and therefore the clash a constant clash is what we, we are seeing in in the in the body polity of, of Manipur so this will be there for a while I mean and it's not going to be solved just because Binalaxmi like me propose a solution or me propose a solution these are historical processes that has evolved What is imp I mean, that's what our leadership have become very good in, in this intrigue, you know, political intrigue. And this is also so well played out by different agencies of the central government. Uh, these are insurgency area. There's a nationality question that needs to be addressed, which is there's an insurgency problem who are raising issues which government is uncomfortable to raise. So the best prescription to this is what Chanakya have written long time ago, Sham, Dam, Dan, Debate. How do you control the rebellious population on the border? Reconcile if you can. If you don't, corrupt them. That's what pumping money, no accountability. Some people, some of our politicians, and mind you, it's not just the Maitri politician. Mm -hmm. The people who have benefited maximum out for, from the underdevelopment of the hills are the, the elites among the tribal community. They are the ones who are siphoning off all this, all this money. There are Maitri collaborators, no doubt. But look at the way in which palatial houses are being built tiles comes from Italy to build this uh, houses of ministers in the in the hills so there's no point blaming the Maitai peasant who's struggling anyway like like anybody else uh, who is no different from their tribal brethren who are uh, doing uh, hunting gathering or uh, whatever so the elite within this community have also benefited substantially out of this loot so this is dam um, corrupt
and then when it doesn't work dhanda go and uh, bash them up you have armed forces special powers act maximum number of detention under nsa unlawful activities prevention act so whoever is seen as a threat and and perceived as a threat to the country nation or the leaders or the vvips who are making all this dirty money shove them into prison and then when all these things doesn't work vet divide i mean if you look at just across the border and look at burma where things are changing very rapidly i had an opportunity to travel to rangoon and see some of the processes there very interestingly there they make the government make arrangements where all the different ethnic communities who are having fighting against themselves sit together in burma myanmar peace center and debate discuss even frame arguments of how they can negotiate with the government if you look at the way ethnic conflict is being handled in manipur you see with the nagas you have a cease fire arrangement and there is talk at the highest level with the prime minister in in all this big big hotels and media exposure with the cookies you have uh, you you built designated camps give stipend to the cadres from the home ministry liberally and with the maitais because they are still demanding independence they are own terrorist organization and just recently uh, unlf chairman is put for uh, for 10 years rigorous imprisonment for this so ethnic every ethnic community is dealt with separately and and all this any many of this reflection that we are seeing in the civil society is also because many of the civil society are also with in with control under the clutches of this armed groups who are who are who are met to divide and fight among itself so ethnic conflict in in manipur and is not just about civil societies it's also about the armed groups it's also about a deliberate policy of divide and rule from the central government and i think we have to look at it holistically having said that i think what initiative that binalakshmi and uh, her group of people have started in delhi i think has already received a lot of very positive response some cynicism as well as, as usual but it is important for us to sit together and start at least talking we may disagree i mean this is not something that can be solved in in a conference or a meeting but it is important that we speak across the silos if you keep on speaking within your own areas of comfort then you keep on deepening and deepening the conflict we all are too sure that we are the right we are on the right track and they are the wrong guys we are the good guys we are they are the bad guys and so it's getting a head on kind of a collision so it is very important whereas there are separate narratives among different ethnic groups which are close it is very important to have a common narrative where we envision a common future all said and done naga cannot have a naga solution without the maitais the maitais cannot have a peaceful world if the nagas are blocking the thing and then and the nag and the maitais cannot do away with the cookies because they are we are all one we are we are in the same boat so you want to rock this boat all of us will sink so it's either you sink together or sail together and i think this is this is this is a ultimate choice that the leadership whether it is civil society political or the even the so called underground have to uh, make a choice already it's so interesting 2014 was the defining moment when nidu tanya was beaten to death in the streets of lajpur nagar in delhi never before have i seen northeast community converging in jantar mantar nagas maitais kukis tripuris sikkimis they were all we were all there this i have never seen in the last 15 years i have observed delhi so this was a very interesting moment and i worked with the naga community with the kuki community to ensure that we get our voice they were pushing me in front bina you speak you tell our issues you know so it became a very interesting synergy which i have never seen before because student unions are also deeply divided among ethnic lines you see even in delhi so you'll have different uh, freshers meet of different uh, you know ethnic groups even the churches are all different even what you do with your festivals all different so for me uh uh 2014 was a defining moment of 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 how commonalities actually emerge of how do we work together you see we formed to get numerous meetings uh we stole jantar mantar for like 3 months we got our demands of getting the government of india to get the besbara committee report uh committee formed uh, they were putting us outside we get crashes meeting in nagaland house 
we were all doing this together. And, so, and then we got 1093 helpline. So a lot of positive things happened. So this is one of, one of the way ahead. And it's so interesting that if there are common commonalities, as, as Dhamma Blue said, we cannot let go of each other's hand, however much there might be grievances. How to get it is what is happening at, at this particular moment. Yes, there are deep, deep resentments which are created, generated. Social media, as I said, have really deepened it further. Because with a smartphone, you upload some images from 10 years ago, uh, bad words, abusive words, and it really angers you, you see. So there has been poisoning, and I'm using the word poisoning of, of young minds to take sides, you see. So some of us, we're now like the elder generation now, some of us had to jump in literally to say that this cannot be our future. What can be our future together? And I always bring, drive home the point, that if you put a Naga, a Kuki, a Maitei, and Arunachali here in Delhi, we are all chinkies. <laughs> so that binds us. Number two, and so, but that's that's just uh, a side's point. But the main thing is, um, I have been repeatedly sharing to our people from the Northeast that this Northeast of India is one of the most resource-rich areas. Uh, we have 66% six, six hydroelectric potential. We have oil, gas, tea, natural gas, uranium. It's extremely resource-rich area. So, and uh, just the way in Congo for Colton they made people fight, while multinational corporations with government, corporatization, corporatized governments then took national wealth away of people in Congo as well as in Sudan and Rwanda. The way we are investigating this in the Northeast. So we have told one of the commonalities is about ensuring uh, our common development agenda as the people define it. We are not saying no to India's development, but what a development, even an activist policy, only one Northeast person, I think Sanjay Azarika was a part of the team. Now, why we reject activist or look or whatever East policies, we are not against joining Northeast with the Southeast Asia. No, we are not against that. But what we are really saying is, if your trains, your structures have to be there, we must involve local indigenous community, uh, communities in decision-making processes of development also. Right now, there's none. We'll have a Babus from Kolkata, sorry to say, who will do all the contracts, will be building big hotels, big infrastructure. They will bring in huge labor. But yes, no one is saying, but uh, what about local labor? So we want to negotiate. And this may be one of the shared agenda of Nagas, Kukis, Metis, Arunachalis, Sikkim is even, all of us, even Tripura is, Tripura is hurting as a state. So I think that is one of the things that we can build a common future together for the entire Northeast people. And if government of India and its agencies still try to divide it, God save India.